What color is the sun? Seems like a pretty strange question. I mean, you can go outside right now, unless you know, it's night time, and find out exactly what color the sun really is by looking directly at the sun, which will make you insane. Don't look at the sun, please. Yeah. What do you think the color of the sun is? I would hazard a guess and say that some of the answers include red, orange, and yellow. But how about these photographs over here by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory that shows a blue sun, a green sun, a black sun, an orange sun, or a gold sun, or a brownish sun. Well, you know, I don't know what color that is. And you also have, you know, why the hell not, a pink sun too. Which, by the way, as explained by Minute Physics over here, is a color that doesn't really exist. What is going on? Now, the sun doesn't throw only one form of electromagnetic radiation at us, but a variety of different forms of electromagnetic radiation. Now, our brains and eyes are built in a way that is able to detect this radiation if the corresponding wavelength to this radiation falls within a certain range. It's a complicated statement, but bear with me here. It means that if this electromagnetic radiation's wavelength is within a range that is between 390 nanometers to somewhere around 700 nanometers, we will be able to detect it as a color and our brain will be able to translate it into that. Now, this, this range is called the visual spectrum and it begins with violet from shortest to longest, from violet then to indigo, to blue, to green, to yellow, to orange, and then to red. If we go beyond it, we are not able to detect any colors anymore. Longer uh, electromagnetic radiation that has long wavelengths, like infrared, is, well, something that we really can't see. Shorter, like X-rays, gamma rays, and ultraviolet are also too short and fall outside the visual spectrum. Therefore, we are also not able to detect it as a color. Is this understood? Good, because we will need it soon. Please. Now imagine that Earth's atmosphere is a roller coaster ride. And like any other roller coaster ride, you need to be of a certain length in order for you to be allowed to ride such a ride. Now this ride goes all the way to your eye. The problem is colors that have short wavelengths like green, indigo, violet, and blue are too short and can't be allowed to ride in that ride and are told to scatter before they reach your eye. But red, orange, and yellow are within the height requirement and are allowed to go all the way to your eye. Now this requirement changes uh, depending on the time of day. You'll notice that right at the beginning of a morning, the, the color could be something like red, and then it moves to orange, then to yellow, then back to orange, and then back to red. That's the cycle of the sun. Now, the thing is, I want to know that if I went into outer space and took a picture of the sun, what color would it really be? Googling it doesn't help. Why? Because you're going to end up with the same pictures, the same photos that I've linked in the beginning of the video. So that's a problem. Now those images, there's a very good reason why they are colored in that way. As I've said before, the sun doesn't release one form of electromagnetic radiation, but a variety of different forms of electromagnetic radiation. But the problem is, we have a very limited range that if we were to go outside, we really can't see. And that is a problem for scientists because they want to know what exactly is happening at the sun at wavelengths that are not within the visual spectrum. So NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory allows us to look at the sun, to observe the sun at different wavelengths that are way outside the visual spectrum. That's because it is able to observe the sun for temperatures that are between 50,000 Kelvin all the way to 20 million Kelvin. And if you go at really high temperatures, the wavelengths that you get are so far outside that it is impossible to detect using your own human eye. So what NASA does is that they add some fake colors to the sun that represents each wavelength, each wavelength that it is being observed in. That's why you get some very funky colors like the ones I've showed you at the beginning of the video. 
As an example, this blue sun over here is the sun being observed at a wavelength that is 11.64 times shorter than the shortest wavelength that we can perceive. This orange sun over here is the sun being observed at a wavelength that is 12.8 times shorter than the shortest wavelength that we can perceive, or 19.4 times shorter than the actual wavelength of orange that we can perceive. This brownish sun over here is the sun being observed at a wavelength that is 20 times shorter than the shortest wavelength that we can perceive. And finally, this pinkish sun over here is the sun being observed at a wavelength that is 18 times shorter than the shortest wavelength that we can perceive. Okay, that's all nice and all, but what exactly is the color of the sun? The question is still not answered. Well, the color of the sun is a very straightforward thing to see, literally. The, uh, you see, earlier I've cheated and said that the sun starts off at dawn by being red, then orange, then yellow. Then I've skipped an entire phase and said back to orange and red at sunset. Uh, this entire phase is noon and during that time pretty much the roller coaster ride relaxes its length requirement and you are able to see the true colors of the sun, no pun intended, and it is, in this case is white. Which, and you know, white, as you know, is this, this an entire visual spectrum just smushed up into this one big mess that we perceive as white and that is the color of the sun. Now I have an assumption here of why a lot of people think that the sun is red, orange or yellow and you know why children grow it in that way. Uh, I think that the sun isn't exactly very light on the eyes, no pun intended, uh, when you try and shoot it at noon or draw it or anything like that because it's, it's, it's a very very bright thing but if you were to look at it during dawn or sunset it's very easy to see and very easy to illustrate so you end up with a sun that is either red, orange or yellow however as I've said the actual color of the sun is white now I could make this video longer and be philosophical about it and talk about the fact that the colors that we perceive aren't actually there and it's just an arbitrary way for our brains and eyes to detect electromagnetic radiation that is a very good survival trait that allows us to navigate through the world and avoid dangers therefore you know making us survive as a species not only our species but our species actually because eyes are a very important thing in everyday life for a lot of creatures but I'm think I think I'm gonna end it right there and just say at least according to our own limited senses the color of the sun is white thank you very much